This is Motor X, and look at us on top of one of these massive tanks. I even think my camera guy is a little <laughs> nervous to be on top right now. But let's talk about Motor X, the history, the longevity, the significance, everything that's involved before we take our audience on a beautiful <laughs> factory tour. Yes, we already mentioned um, Motor X is now 105 years old. We started 1917 uh, with leather and floor care products. You know, and then with the upcoming motorization all over the world, the second generation under Mr. Eddie Bucher, they started to produce engine oils. So the company name first was just Rex when we did the leather care products. And then with the motorization, it became Motorex. And the name still stands today. So, uh, yeah, this is where we are right now. That is interesting. And you, are, you guys are in 85 countries around the world. 85. We're talking 38,000 or more active customers. Yes. You have a big focus in the U.S., which is great because that's where I'm from. <laughs> but you also have so many other areas around the world. You're in charge of, you know, all the Latin American countries. Exactly. So let's kind of just talk to the audience real quick about where you can support them. Before we go around to the factory tour, which we're just about to do, I'm just trying to get you guys all excited. Tell them about where Motorex can really help them uh, create a, a difference in their company. Yeah, I mean, Motorex, we specialize in high quality, water miscible and non water miscible coolant. And we understand ourselves, as I said, a high quality company. And we believe that the importance of the coolant is still under undervalued. And uh, with our products, we will help you to increase your output we will help you to uh, increase your tool life. We will help you with your sustainability because we believe that our coolants last a lot longer in the machines. Also because of some additional devices we have. But we're going to talk about this a little later. So this is where we're coming from. Uh, also, you know, working with distributors all over the world. I mean, we have distributors in the U.S. and Canada, all over Europe. We have own sales uh, offices in Sweden, Austria, Germany, in France, obviously in Switzerland. And also there's a production plant in Poland as well. So we are here in Europe with very strong roots, but we also like to you know, expand into other markets and um, in the US, Canada, even Mexico is now uh, yeah, where we're heading to. So. Absolutely perfect. Without any further ado, let's take a look at what a hundred years of experience will bring to your shop floor and how it's all being done. All right, Simon, so we have our first stop here, which we're going to share with the audience. What are we standing in front of? What is this area we're looking at? So basically, everything starts with a good base, right? So uh, good base oil is the main ingredient for any coolant, right? So we are now standing here in front of one of the, the stations where our base oil suppliers bring the product in before we pump it into the big tanks behind us. So also the additives we use to produce our products, they are delivered here, in vessels or wherever. And there are a lot of different additives, you know. Some of them are a little thicker, some of them are a little thinner. So most of the suppliers, they warm up the chambers in their trucks to make sure that the, the additive is, you know, pumpable, actually. So maybe I can show you yeah, some, let's take a look. some examples. You, you know, I did hear that rumor, Simon, that it is all about that base, right? There's songs being made of it. I've it said is. it before as well. It's all about that base. Now, when we're talking about these liquids, and some are thicker and some are thinner, and the importance of the base. Now, you've yeah. been doing this a long time, with yeah. Motorex 13 years, I believe, yeah. right? So let's just kind of break it down for the audience who's only just learning about how this actually works and say, these are the differences, these are the beginning components of why this is gonna help you, even yeah. though you'll never have to worry about that. So that's, that's our job, right? Yeah. But let's learn about that at a level that everyone can go, oh, now I get it, now I understand. Yeah, so base oil, meanwhile, the base oil technology is a lot different than it used to be, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. So meanwhile, you have new base oil technology. It helps to improve lubricity. It helps to reduce the mist in the machine, 
for example, when you work with the cutting oil. So there is a lot new stuff to it. Also, when we talk about security and safety at the machine, let's say the, the flash point of the products of a cutting oil, meanwhile, is higher than it used to be 10 or 15 years ago, just you know, thanks to the new base oils we have. And just to give you an idea of you know, the different, this is just a regular base oil. And, and this is a viscosity improver, and you can see how thick it is. So when we actually get the delivery of this, you got to make sure that this one is warmed up before you uh, put it through the pump, right? So. Well, this one looks like either apple juice or a sample <laughs> I've, I've performed before, and the other one looks like some delicious yeah. honey. Yeah. And that's really the difference between the two. You yeah. say it comes out like this, right? And then this is kind yeah. of where this you've done your work. This is just basically. It's okay. a, a viscosity improver. You know, if you let's say if you need a product, um, whatever, in a construction machine and somewhere, you're outside where you have very high temperatures and very low temperatures, then you need this, you know, to, to keep the product more stable. It's not an additive you use in a cutting oil, but just to give you an idea of all the different type of additives and base oil that come in and our pumps, you know, need to, need to make sure they pump it in the right tank in the, at the right temperature, otherwise the pumps will fail, right? Or, a hundred years <laughs> of science in the works right here. And we're talking, I believe, around 800 raw yeah. materials, additives, and chemicals that go into a lot of these products. That's pretty significant. Now, exactly. I'm excited to see the next step of this tour. I know you are as well. Simon, should we go take a look? We can go and take a look, yeah. All right, so Simon, we're here looking at energy efficient tanks, preheated base oil. Exactly. This is kind of where the magic starts, right? You mentioned the foundation being so important. It's all exactly. about that base, about exactly. that, right? Yeah. But we're in this room, it's much warmer. It's also temperature controlled exactly. to a warm temperature. Can you tell us a little bit more about the room we're standing in, the tanks, how yes. much actual content are in these tanks? What we have here is a 10 additional tanks to the tanks you saw outside with the total capacity of 50,000 liters and we have another 18 tanks with a capacity of 40,000 liters. And what we do here is also an additional base oil stock and additive stock. And uh, you can also see here a tank which is uh, heated for the base oil with a very high viscosity. Uh, you gotta make sure you, you are able to pump it back into the production, right? So this is why we gotta heat it up over here. And there's even more tanks upstairs. I don't know if you want to have a look over there. We're definitely going to have a look with the B-roll. As we walk around, though, you mentioned something to me that's kind of cool, is we're kind of standing on a swimming pool, right? Because being eco-friendly, being green, and being conscious to our environment is important to MotorX as yeah. well, isn't it? Exactly. We, we are basically standing on a swimming pool, as you already mentioned. So just in case of a leakage, which Never happened, you know, in the last 100 years. Yeah, knock on wood, right? So we are standing on the swimming pool just in case of a leakage. If, if there is oil running out of the system, we need to be able to recover 50% of the total capacity. And I got to mention that we keep 6 million liter of base oil here, 6 million. And there's an additional 2 million uh, in external uh, storage. So we, with this swimming pool, we can recover four million, um, two and a half million liters of base oil, sorry. And it is also safe, uh, on a safe um, platform. So in case of an earthquake, we got to make sure that, you know, nothing happens or again, knock on wood, right? So sustainability is, is key. We also can completely block all the pipes um, that run into the canalization just to make sure that we don't um, pollute the, the drinking water for the city of Langenthal. So we are in a very safe place right here and I really hope uh, that we never got to use the swimming pool uh, beyond us. Right? Well, thank you for the safety precautions just in case, but like you said, knock on wood, right? You know, living in <laughs> yeah. Florida and having a couple of leaks in the Gulf before, oh, yeah. certainly I appreciate it. I know the locals here as well appreciate the oh, safety yeah. measures because we need this product, right? Oh, yeah. And there's so much more excitement to come with this tour. So we head off to the next area and take a look yeah. at what else is going on with okay. this hundred years of technology. Let's go.
Simon, this is a really colorful room. I mean, I'm looking at pipes yeah. everywhere and colors everywhere. It's almost like a carousel of colors. What yeah. are we actually doing in here as I'm overwhelmed <laughs> by the rainbow? This is basically the heart and soul of the production. We are right here in the pump house where we have 64 pumps that make sure that the right additives and the right base oils are pumped into the right tanks or into the right mixers or into the right additive tanks or into the trucks that come and pick something up. So this is uh, all um, uh, controlled by you know, a, co a big computer and um, it always makes sure that the right valve is opened, right. <laughs> hopefully. So uh, yeah, and you see all these pipes here, all these colored pipes. And if we, if we add all the pipes in-house, we end up at the 180 kilometers. And you know, to give the audience an idea, this is exactly the distance between Los Angeles and San Diego. So there's just an incredible amount of pipes inside to make sure that all the fluids are going into the right direction and end up in the right tank. You're telling me in this facility, if we stretch all these pipes out, it'll go from LA all the way down to San Diego. Exactly. In one building. In one building, yeah. That is impressive. <laughs> a lot more colors though. So is there anything specific or exciting about these buckets hanging from each uh, one? Oh, not like really. Just, just to save the very last drop of everything, you know, just if you need to take a sample or something, uh, we just got to make sure that we don't lose anything. Also, again, here we are standing on a big swimming pool just in case of a leakage. Also, here we are able to recover uh, most of the oil if there would be a leakage. But. It makes sense to me, Simon. Yeah. I mean, when it's as quality as this is, you want to save every last drop, That's right? That's true. So this is a colorful room, but I think you have so much more to show yeah. us about what's going on here at Motorx, don't yeah. you? I'm pretty sure we're gonna see this color pipes in all the other rooms too. So just follow the pipes and we will see where all this stuff is going, right? We normally say follow the yellow brick road, but today we're <laughs> saying follow the colorful pipes. Yeah, right? okay, let's follow the colorful pipes. All right guys, let's come <laughs> this way and let's take a look at the next room. All right, so now we wanna talk a little bit about automation. I know you yeah. were at IMTS, I was at IMTS. We know the buzzword right now is automation. Yeah. As we're going through this factory tour, we have, as you can see, people working, automation going on. There's a robot inside of that window exactly. right now. What, that, what is that thing doing? This robot is handling all the drums in here. I mean, empty drums, uh, filled drums, and uh, he's just taking care of, I think, up to 800 drums. Uh, at least every day, I believe. And um, these drums are shipped automatically from the filling station outside where they are picked up and then go somewhere, you know, in, in stock, either here or somewhere else. And um, we just try to keep a high automation standard here, you know. It also to make the work easier for all the employees over here. And it's just a lot faster and easier and yeah, this is where we're going with this, and we're not done. There's uh, new projects to come also when it comes to automation. So um, we're working on a high automation standard here. That's definitely one of our goals. Yeah. Automation's key everywhere. And you even mentioned to me earlier that you have a train outside ready to go that gets filled up regularly and it just exactly, comes yeah. in. So you guys are automating obviously internally but externally as well to make sure exactly. that your customers around the world are taking exactly. care of. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Just remember the pump house we've been in, that we have a direct connection to you know, the train station where all these vessels are coming in. So also there, we don't need, you know, to move it around. We have a pump house, we have everywhere, we have pipes. We try to pump it from point one to point B without, you know, storage in between or somewhere else. So everything needs to be quick and easy and automation is definitely key there, yeah. That's so let's, let's take a walk. I know that we have that robot, we have that going yeah. on, all those tanks. But you also have some really cool technology about how pipes are being cleaned and where it's being pushed to and exactly. from. Exactly. And we're going to show the audience a little bit more about that as well. So come on, guys. Let's take a look. So Simon, now we're standing in front of some pretty unique technology. And normally, you kind of use one liquid to flush another liquid. But you have something else here. Would you mind explaining what's going on to the audience? Yeah, we use the so-called picking system to flush the pipes and just to make sure to get all the residues out of the pipes. 
and also here sustainability is key. So we want to make sure that we don't waste, you know, we don't waste any oil just to clean the pipes and the production lines over here. So with compressed air, we shoot this pigging stuff through the pipes to make sure we get everything out and the waste is at the very minimum, right? So also here sustainability is key for us. And to my knowledge, we are the first uh, lubricants manufacturing company in Europe to actually use this technology to flush the pipes. Very interesting. So that's pigging for those of you who are watching. Yeah. And that is a piece of sustainability, which we're all going to, I believe, at some point. So let's continue to follow the uh, color yeah. pipe road as yeah. we're leading under this giant tank. We're following the color yeah. pipe road, right? So, so what are we standing under now and what's going on? So this is basically the bottom of the, of the mixer, which is uh, two levels high and all the product is mixed in here and then it comes out here at the bottom, goes directly into the filling station and is then filled into the drums. So also here we try to keep the distance short just to make sure that we are efficient in what we're doing, right? We're going to see the mixes a little later to see what we're actually cooking inside. But just to give you an idea, we're right now standing under the mixer and there is product coming out right now and filled into the drums down here. So. Well, let's take a look over to what's to your right. And I know the audience is curious to see that, but also you mentioned, and I like that you did, because that was going to be my segue as well, was that everyone who's watching will get to see what the recipe, well, not maybe not the recipe, but what's going on inside of the mixer. But before we get to that, what are we looking at here? We're filling up a bunch of tanks right now, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, barrels? Yeah, it looks like we are now filling in uh, biodegradable hydraulic oil, and... Um, we are able to fill like every minute, I think it's two drums. So it's quite an efficient, efficient um, filling station over here. Then also from here, the robot will take the drums once they're filled. The robot will take the drums from here, put it on the pallets and you know, we'll bring it to the next, uh, to the next point where it's picked up to, to, to the warehouse or wherever it goes. So yeah. Two drums in a minute, that is pretty fast. Now I know we have to get a workout because we're about to walk up flight after flight after flight oh, yeah. to show the audience how to get to the top of these tanks, which yeah. I believe you said is two stories tall. And exactly. on the way, we're gonna have a lot of other topics to talk okay. about, aren't we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's go. go. All right, Simon, we've now climbed two floors. We've also followed the, the colored pipe road and there's footprints on the ground as well to take us to the top <laughs> of the mixer so exactly. this room is really cool looking what are we doing here other than mixing so remember the color pipes you can see them again so they bring the base oils and the additives and everything we need to mix a certain product they bring it here and it goes down into the mixer we mix it we blend it and then we fill it into the drums so we have a lot of different type of mixers bigger ones, smaller ones for product with, you know, where you have a small quantity. We also have, especially, we have mixers just for the water miscible concentrates because you don't want to mix it up, you know, with oils and then you have to clean the whole tank and stuff like that. So you want to keep it separate. So um, there's mixes here. There is more mixes in the third floor. There are mixers in the new building on the other side of the road. So. We have a lot of mixes for a lot of coolant, and this is what we're doing here. Well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, something that I certainly don't know about, and I'm hoping you do. I'm hoping the audience is just as curious as I am. When I think about 100 years of technology, yeah. and I think about the significance of what these mixers are doing, and you mentioned if there's a mistake, how much is lost. How was it originally done? Uh, you're a young man. Yeah. You know, you're, you're about 25 well, years old. You're yeah. a young man, right? So when I think about how this was originally done and the technology, and not just technology of the capability, yeah. but the technology to keep it clean and eco-friendly as as exactly. well how did this was this originally mixed by a man with a big stick I guess so I mean we got to we got to ask uh, the, the guys are they're working here for 35 or 40 years I mean it's my 13th year now but I only know the company you know the way it is right now but I can only imagine that there was a significant leap you know in the the 60s and 70s where we really just had to just had the engine oil and hydraulic oils and stuff 
and then 50 years ago all this um, metalworking fluids they came into the game then we have the the biodegradable hydraulic oils and for every new let's say technology or product you bring in you also got to think about hey maybe we got to buy another mixer or we need some extra pipes over here so it just grew and grew and grew and when I started 13 years ago I remember there are two mixes over there that they brought in they were brought in maybe five or six years ago they had to open the whole front of the building just to get them in so there's always a progress I don't know how they did it like 70 years ago I cannot give you a, prop, a proper answer on that but I definitely sure how we do it today and I just know we, we got to bring in new mixes all the time because this new product new technology and you want to make sure that you don't mix product up and also with you mentioned 28,000 active customers you really got to produce right so um, we're just growing and that's yeah. what we do here yeah. and most definitely do so for the audience that's watching if you're curious to know more about that history leave some comments the motor x guys will get back to you to answer those questions yeah. and i know there's people that are leaving comments already about the excitement of this video okay. on places like linkedin okay. so andrea we're gonna have a watch party for you my friend <laughs> i know this is a good friend of yours yeah now, he is these machines are doing the work, but it's not always machines. You actually have a chemist area where we're doing a lot of mixing as well. Should we head upstairs? I exactly. was going to the third floor, fourth floor. Who knows how many floors by the end of this tour? But let's head that direction yeah. and take a look at what they're doing as let's well. Let's go to the lab. Let's do it. All right, Simon. Well, we were climbing the steps, and I got tired, so we decided yeah. to take a break Same here. and see how these things are getting filled before yeah. heading over to the chemistry area. This is some full-on automation. We got cobots behind us. We got pieces being filled here. Tell the audience a little bit more about what we have going on. So we just saw the big filling station where we fill the drums and the, the 1,000 liter IBCs. But we also have a lot of customers, they use smaller quantities, right? So this is the filling station for the one liter bottles, four liter bottles, let's say um, spindle lubricants, just to lubricate the spindles. It's a, mostly it's a four liter canister. And we fill this here with this filling station. And just to give you a number, this, I mean, we, we produce a lot of engine oil too, right? And we are producing over 3 million one liter bottles every year. Just one liter bottles, 3 million. I, I believe it's an incredible number for a Swiss company. And as you already mentioned before, we also here we try to help with cobots to make work easier for the people over here to make it more efficient, to make it faster, to make it more safe for them. So also here we, we have this automation approach. We try to, yeah, just to increase the process a little bit with callbots, right? Automation is key. Automation is everywhere for sure. That number, I find it to be a large number as well. Yeah. And to be fair, while I'm driving around with my buddy Chris Thomas, our camera guy, we see your green motor X signs everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere we look, from the stores to the yeah. buildings to the big tanks. I mean, the yeah. town we're in right now, yeah. everywhere I look, because you guys have so much warehousing oh, supporting yeah. so many areas yeah of the world and also so many industries in the world exactly. as well. How many industries are you actually covering right now? You're well, everywhere, right? Oh, we have metalworking industry, uh, we have engine oil for cars, for motorbikes, for bicycles, we have the whole Alpine line, you know, for funiculars and all that stuff. We have a construction line for construction machines, we have marine line for boats and vessels, we have uh, I might miss a couple. It's just incredible the, the, the product range we have. As you mentioned at the beginning, 2,500 different formulation. So that is a lot. Metalworking is also it's only a part of it. So we're actually in so many different industries, and it's very interesting to work for such a company because you get to talk to a lot of different customers from different industries, and yeah. Speaking about the green motor X signs, you got to understand that, especially in Switzerland, Switzerland, we have very strong roots, and the brand is famous all over the country. Also, meanwhile, in Europe, and we are very proud of the brand, and we, you know, we just try to show it everywhere. Maybe you saw the green motor X drum in the roundabout in the city center. You see the green motor X drum outside of. Everywhere you go to the countryside, you see green drums everywhere, and we are very proud of it. And so we really try to 
to push the brand and show our brand everywhere we can. That's why. From Rex to Motor X, yeah, uh, over a hundred years of technology. I think my legs are a little bit rested now so we can head upstairs and yeah. look at how this stuff is being put together. Yeah. Tested, not full R&D because apparently there's an area here <laughs> that they're not letting me in in the R&D area. <laughs> but we will get to show you some of the chemistry lab and what's going on there. So Simon, let's take our audience go. and go take a look. Let's go. All right, Simon, well, we made it up the stairs and I got to be honest with you chemistry absolutely fascinates me because really? this is where the magic <laughs> happens but i can also equally say i'm out of my depth guys as much as i love chemistry i wasn't so good at it in high school in fact i may or may not have blown up a couple of things but that being said <laughs> this is a really cool lab what goes on yeah. in here as i look at these lab coats everywhere yeah so this is one part of the lab it's actually a two-floor lab almost and what we're doing here is uh, a service we provide to our customers. Um, they can send us samples and we analyze it. Let's say whether it's hydraulic oil or cutting oil or water miscible coolants. We, they can basically send us the samples. We analyze it if, if still in good shape or if, if they need to change oil or whatever. There's a lot of tests we can run here just to find out the condition of the of the oil or the condition of the coolant and for our customers this service is for free so but this is just one part then we have another part just imagine we get uh, hundreds and thousands of deliveries from base oil and additives so before we fill it into our tanks we got to make sure that the quality is is, is okay right so um, this quality management we do here we first take a sample out of the truck or the vessel or whatever, we analyze the sample of the incoming base oil. And then in 20 minutes to 30 minutes, we can say, okay, this one is good to go. So we just want to make sure that we all only get the good quality base oils into our tanks. You know, if there's something wrong with the base oil, for whatever reason, to my knowledge, it doesn't really happen. But uh, if there's something wrong, then we, gotta, we cannot accept the delivery, right? So this is also something we do here. Plus, um, we're all about innovation, right? So we also want to innovate new products for new markets. And uh, our product managers, they also work hand in hand with the lab over here. So if they have new ideas to make new formulation with the R&D um, guys, they also test it here, right? So. This is just a small part of what we're doing here in, in the lab, but it's, in my opinion, a very important uh, point. And um, yeah, this is, this is what we're doing here, right? Well, we started off this whole tour with saying the foundation of something is very important. Exactly. And when I walk into this area and listen to you talk and see what's going on here, this is kind of the foundation of quality exactly. and service and innovation. Exactly. Which, oh my gosh, how important is this room and the people in this room to everything that goes outside of this room, right? Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, this, I mean, I couldn't explain it better. It's just exactly what we're doing here, which is... We try to make sure that all, I mean, when you do a new product, I mean, you, you will not find, you know, one or two formulation and then it's done. Maybe you got to do 20, 30, 40, 50 different formulation. What do I know? And you just want to find out, you know, the right one. And that's a, that's a huge process. And we, we are from sales or from product management. We are happy to have people here in the lab to help us out to find you know the right product for the right customer at the right time in the right market so this is yeah it's huge what we're doing here actually um well simon let's let these wonderful ladies and gentlemen get back to work get out of their hair where are we headed off to next we're going to the fourth floor now the fourth floor let's go guys all right, Simon, well, we've made it to the fourth floor, which is exactly. coincidentally the 4.0 area. I exactly. think you may have done that on purpose, knowing how clever yeah. you are. Yeah, there's a plan behind that, that's for sure. <laughs> there's a plan behind everything, yeah. so I'm seeing. So as we're walking around, let's give a brief overview because there are other videos where we're going to go in depth to the technical details of what you're about to hear about. Yeah. This is just your overview, getting you excited about what else is going on here yeah. at MotorX. With that being said, let's start to this one to the left here, to yeah. the camera on the right. This is an app that you have, is that what's going on? Yeah, exactly. We, we know water miscible coolant is a big part of our business and uh, water quality is very important. 
Uh, just imagine 93% of the product is water and 7 or 8% of the product is concentrate. So we want to make sure that the water quality is always right. So we developed this app for customers to make a quick and easy scan of the water strip and he will get all the important figures out of it. So he doesn't need to send us a sample and ask us, hey, how's the water quality and can I use this water you know, to mix the coolant? He can do it himself. Plus, you can also um, measure the emulsion itself, so pH value and all that other stuff. You can mix it here and it is saved in the cloud, so you always have access to what you actually measured. It almost seems like, if I'm going to use keywords, is simplicity, flexibility, reliability. Exactly. This is, and it's in the app on a phone exactly. we're all playing on. So I'm going to take a step back and have our camera guy kind of zoom in on this contraption. It says coolant measure, yeah. Photorex again. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing with this one? I see a Siemens screen here as well. Yeah, I mean, this is the first prototype we had of our technology. It's called Fluid Links. Um, we know automation is key and we know that 90% of the customers are still measuring their water miscible coolants with strips and sticks and manually, and a lot of them, sometimes they don't measure at all. And this is key for us, so we, we develop this, this um, measuring unit that actually measures concentration, pH value, temperature, and even conductivity, fully automated, like, if you like every half an hour, every two hours, it's measuring your coolant and it helps you to keep the data about your coolant and it helps you to interact if for whatever reason something goes wrong. You know, let's say, uh, just, uh, just a stupid example, but sometimes they're running out of coolant and they don't realize it and then the concentration is dropping like from 7, 6.5, 6, then they know what's going on and they can react immediately instead of just, you know, have to remove the whole coolant and dump it somewhere. So um, this is the first prototype and move to the next machine. Um, you can also see the Fluid Links technology on, on the side of this big coolant washing machine called Coolant Links. Um, this basically works, this fluid link basically also works as the brain for a wide range of devices that help to automate the coolant process. So this big coolant links over here, uh, it's, it's treating the coolant in up to six machines. So it skims off the, the tramp oil, it blasts air in it to, to give the coolant some room to breathe and then it it mixes the fresh coolant and it brings it back to the machine. So it's a fully automated system uh, for your fluid process, actually. And Fluid Links is the brain behind it. Fluid Links, first, it's measuring what's going on. Concentration is seven. Then you can set it up, okay, but next week I need 8%. So the Fluid Links is automatically give this information to the Coolant Links, and then the Coolant Links will rise the concentration to 8% in this particular machine. So we're talking about the fully automated coolant management system here. And Simon, I'm listening to you talk and I'm sure the audience is paying attention as well. I can honestly say that I am very guilty as a machinist <laughs> of the one who is not paying attention to coolant. Yeah. And I'd be willing to say that I'm probably not the only one. I mean, I know there's some <laughs> folks out there that are paying attention and we love you for that, don't get me yeah. wrong. But I was certainly in the group that wanted to get my machining done. So I was cutting, I was uh, you know, increasing uh, or reducing my cycle times, I was increasing my tool life, I was yeah. looking for better finishing. I was, that was where my focus was, even exactly. my work holding side of things. And it was often an afterthought, which exactly. is unfair because it is so important. So let's just pretend for a moment that I'm in the minority and there's a lot of people who <laughs> are actually paying attention to coolant. This to me makes all the sense in the world because now we're reducing the overall uh, need for the, um, the person to go and check every time. Yeah. Like you mentioned earlier, sometimes it's the strips that aren't always cleaned or yeah. they're not always look right. Why not automate that process? And you said yeah. up to six machines. Yeah. However, you have a piece of technology we're about to look at now yeah, exactly. that is patented by you guys that no one else has that has the capability to measure so many different aspects. Exactly. And, and you'll probably tell me if I'm wrong, I'm sure, up to 12 machines in full automation 
to allow whatever customers you work with not to have to worry about the details of all these different components that go yeah. on with coolant. Am I right in saying this? Well, I got to correct you because we do oh. actually 16 machines with that 16 one. 16 <laughs> machines. I even underestimated the capacity. No. I doubled the one from six yeah. over here, but this is actually 16 machines. Yeah, you know, the, the big difference is we realize that a lot of customers, they already have oil skimmers or they already have, you know, uh, um, O2 uh, blasting into the coolant, they treat the coolant with, with skimmers or whatever. So the main thing we believe the customer needs is just to measure the coolant and then the automatic top up. So uh, this is what we did with this fellow here. Um, again, you see the fluid links, it works as a brain. It measures the concentration, pH value, conductivity in, in 16 machines gives the information to this mixing device. The mixing device is preparing the coolant and sends it to the particular machine. So this is top up and measuring for 16 machines. And yeah, that's, that's the technology behind it. Well, for those of you watching right now, I've definitely run some pretty big machines. And if I've gone to measure, something would be wrong in the measurement that I received back. And I would give you guys a call and say, hey, uh, something's wrong with your coolant right now. Yeah. And you'll give me a little bit of advice. And what I've found is sometimes the, the tanks are empty or sometimes mm -hmm. the mixture isn't right. Yeah. And this helps us to not have to worry about those details exactly. based on everything else we have to pay attention exactly. to in a machine shop. Exactly. This is the automated version of the coolant side exactly. of things that's really helping us out. Yeah. We always think of, firstly, pallet change, cobots, robots, bar feeds. Now we're getting into filtration systems for the automation as yeah. well. We're getting into fire prevention for automation systems. Exactly. And this is just another step to help people yeah. create success because nobody wants to walk into their shop after investing a quarter million dollars on a part <laughs> running through the night and that part is scrapped because the coolant was messed yeah. up. Nobody wants that. Isn't it mind blowing that, you know, just a couple of years ago, there was nothing like this in the market or there were some, you know, solutions, but you know, it's not really, still 90% of the customers don't really measure it automatically. You have a machine running 24 hours, seven days a week, but you still need a guy to go there and, you know, do the top up and measure the coolant. And we believe that this is the future of the industry. You know, automation is key. And also from the sus sustainability perspective, you want to make sure that the coolant in the tanks is lasting as long as possible, right? And you can check the figures from home. Just imagine you sitting at home in front of the TV. Oh, what is machines number <laughs> six doing? Oh, it's still okay. I mean, this gives you some, uh, that's a new dimension to, to this process, you know. I always felt it's, it's a shame you have this very, very incredible stuff, this, this incredible machines, incredible parts. Uh, it's always high precision and top notch. And then for the coolant process, there was nothing there. And we try to, to help customers now with new technology to, to automate that process too. Thank you for doing that. For everyone who's watching, there are other technical videos to go even deeper into each of these pieces of technology. So tune into that. Obviously, MTD. Obviously, this is Motorex. Simon, let's take a walk because for those watching right now, guess what we're getting ready to see? Almost like a museum of history, what <laughs> everyone does here at Motorex. We're talking, uh, so there's gonna be some motorcycles here, some old carts. The original can of how this company started, it is incredibly fascinating to me. So as we walk and talk, Simon, I know you know this area far better than I do. I can read signs. We have some of your great colleagues walking through. <laughs> They're kind of scared of the camera, so we're Chris <laughs> not point at them too much. But as we're walking through and the audience is taking a look and Chris is scanning around, let's talk about some of what we're looking looking at here. Yeah, you know, we have a strong background from the, you know, the motorbike and car industry. This is what you're seeing over here. We have the motorbikes and all these old typewriting machines and uh, the owner family has, uh, you know, how you say, um, is really into that thing. They also own a museum where they show all that these typewriting machines. And you see the motorbikes, we have a partnership with KDM. Um, you see the bikes, partnerships with Tusquarna. And yeah, this is, this is our background, you know, from a racing perspective. Yeah, 
beautiful motorcycles. I'm sure you're gonna let me drive one of those out of here. We got shirts <laughs> with signatures on it. We have bicycles. Yeah. You mentioned the typewriters. Just beautiful art. Looked like a piece of a transformer. We have this simulation piece here. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. gonna let you jump on that as well. Yeah. And we have some really incredible engines sitting over here. Yeah. But it doesn't end here. What else do we have no. here? Well, there is uh, this photo finish area over here with the KTM bike. Um, it's, it's always nice, you know, I think we're also going to shoot a picture over here and, uh, you know, for customers just to, to line up and shoot, shoot a couple of pictures, always nice. Now I'm seeing containers all sitting around as well, which is what we saw actually running live earlier in this exactly. tour as well. And they're just kind of, you know, hanging out here as a display item, but this really does feel like a museum to me of past, present, and future. Exactly. There's also a lot of, you know, if you look at these oil cans over here, there's a huge collection of historical <laughs> oil cans. And yeah, you even found one of the first products we did. It's the Rex uh, uh, polished stuff, you know, for leather. And um, you're also going to see one of the first um, engine oil drums in the back over there. Um, yeah, some of the first Motorex cans, and we just try to, you know, collect it. So, uh, yeah, we understand where we're coming from, where we're going. We understand a little bit the history of lubricants, and really kudos to our owner that is really collecting all that stuff to, yeah, to show off a little bit over here. <laughs> I love being able to see it just like this. I agree with you. Kudos to the owners for putting <laughs> all of that together. I mean, I hope you guys that are on this tour right now are enjoying this as much as I am. I mean, starting from the foundation, as you mentioned in the beginning, going through the entire factory, knowing that you're in so many countries around the world with so many employees, supporting so many customers of your own. I mean, this is just such a beautiful tour. Now, there is an R&D facility, but we <laughs> cannot take a look at that. I apologize. I wish I could show you. We love being able to show you as much as we can. Should we head outside? I believe there's a surprise at the end of this tour as well. Uh, it could be a surprise outside, yeah. It Let's go and have surprise. a look. <laughs> Come on, guys. We got to see this surprise. All right, Simon. Well, we really appreciate you offering your time and experience for this no. glorious factory tour Thanks here for in Motor being X here. in Switzerland. Thanks for being here. It was nice to have you here. So very happy to have you here. I think it was a good experience. Uh, yeah, thanks. Well, before I go, I have two things for the audience to know. One is you're growing so quickly here. You actually yeah. have another building. Exactly, hopefully yes. Hopefully we'll get to film in in the future. <laughs> but for now, we're just going to show a bit of footage about it because you're growing that quickly, right? Exactly. Yeah, we just got a... We had to build a new building like five years ago, I believe, uh, with two extra floors of production and two extra floors of office. Yeah, we just, yeah, we're just growing and we try to expand our range a little bit. So wherever we go, we are looking for new distributors too. Uh, US, Canada, Europe, wherever you are. If you feel like our brand and our products fit into your portfolio, make sure you give us a call or you send us an email we are happy to yeah to listen to you a call an email go to the website the website is motorx.com motorx.com so if you're a distributor if you're looking for a quality swiss product with over a hundred years of experience after enjoying this glorious tour give simon a call give the folks at motorx a call simon one last time my friend i really do appreciate it's great you. to have you thank and you maybe my best part of the tour <laughs> thank you so much for letting me borrow this car you're for welcome the week. you're I welcome do enjoy it. it this is going to be a lot of fun thank you all for watching and i will see you again soon